Hello viewers and welcome to the latest episode in my series of videos on Australian built archtop guitars. I'm pretty excited about this particular video. It's about the Pacific Commander serial number 2054. It is currently December the 29th 2022. I took delivery of this guitar yesterday and it's 72 years old. I'm amazed at its condition and I'd like to share it with you. I first discovered that the Pacific brand existed when I came across these promotional videos of Chris Cheney, the front man of the band The Living End, holding one. Now I assume it's his guitar, it's been modified a bit with some modifications that uh, scream Cheneyism. Uh, so yes, I've been looking for one of these for 20 years uh, to fill the gap in my collection. However, all the ones that I've come across have been in pretty rough condition, similar to the one that you see here in this photograph. So finding one that was in good condition has literally taken me 20 years. So first a little bit about the company. Pacific, the company, the brand, were made in Australia between 1940 and 1949. The company was formed by Heck McLennan. He was a mandolin and banjo player and he was well known in the Australian music scene from the early 20s. So the instruments were sometimes built here, sometimes built overseas and brought in and labelled here with the name Pacific. And yeah, they are one of the earlier guitar makers in Australia. They predated some of the better known guitar makers here now. Um, and they were certainly one of the first guitar manufacturers here in Australia to produce instruments in you know, production numbers in large quantities. However, uh, yes, very few of their instruments survive because the quality of the instruments were, they were made of inferior timbers, mostly is the main problem. Uh, so yeah, there's not very many of them left. Most of the guitars that they built or had built for them were flat top acoustic guitars, often with a Hawaiian theme paint, painted or stenciled on them. They did also make other instruments, banjos and mandolins. We're not quite sure how many were made. Um, there was an interview with Merv Cargill, one of the builders for the company later on, certainly in the late 40s, and he suggested that they made 50 of this particular model, the Commander. The Commander was the only arch top they made that I'm aware of, and it was certainly the top of the range for the company at the time. So this particular one bears the serial number 2054. No idea what that means in terms of uh, where it was in the production run. Um, we assume it was built towards the end of the run because it was purchased new in 1950. So it was probably built either earlier in 1950 or 1949. So a few of the statistics about this guitar, for those of you interested in such details, it has a scale length of exactly 25 inches. It's quite a big guitar with the width across the lower bout being 17 and 1 8 inch. At the waist it's 9 and 3 quarters so it's got quite a skinny waist and a 12 and a quarter inch up about. The neck is really chunky. There's no truss rod. The neck, so it's a deep C profile. It's 7 eighths of an inch deep uh, at first fret. And it's not a wide nut particularly at uh, 1 and 5 eighths inch. It's quite a well radius fretboard with a 10 inch radius. Uh, the wood of the fretboard is definitely rosewood, some sort of rosewood. I assume it must be imported. The top wood seems to be some sort of carved spruce, fairly open grain. And the back and sides are mahogany. Now interestingly the back is flat, like a normal flat top acoustic guitar. It's not carved, it's not arched, it's flat and braced. And the neck is also made of mahogany. The guitar does feature some quirky uh, idiosyncratic features, one of which is the plastic bridge. Now some of the um, literature that I've come across suggests that it's Bakelite, but it doesn't look or feel like Bakelite to me. It could be a variety of Bakelite. The guitar does feature all of its original hardware, so it has its original tuners, which are actually, they're a little bit worn, a little bit loose, but they're actually quite good and its original tailpiece. The tailpiece is quite a unique design with three tongues that sort of just hook onto the piece at the bottom which has the Pacific logo. 
and the strings just sort of slot in at the top there and they're loose. A previous owner has um, stuck on the back of those tongues little plastic rubber uh, feet I guess so that it stops them vibrating too much which is a common problem with uh, loose tail pieces on arch top guitars adds too much resonance. Some other quirky features of the guitar is that it does actually have a plastic nut which is mounted on a couple of wooden shims. Now I assume the idea is here you could replace those shims uh, or thin the shims or whatever to adjust the height of the nut. Uh, so yeah that's a feature that I've never seen on another guitar before. And the guitar did come to me with its original pick guard or scratch plate or finger rest, whatever you want to call it, in arch top circles. However, as you can see, it was in quite a horrible state. Being 72 years old, it's shrunk. The plastic, it's actually quite a soft kind of plastic, and it seems to have shrunk. And in the process of shrinking, has warped and cracked. So I've made a new replacement, but I'll keep that one with the guitar in the case. So, as I said earlier, the Pacific Commanders were built by a guy called Merv Cargill, who was quite a well-known guitar builder in Melbourne. And he passed away, I think, last year, or in 2020, not too long ago. Uh, but fortunately, there's lots of um, interviews with him and literature about him, so we know quite a lot. And his son has um, continued the legacy by carrying on with Cargill Custom Guitars in Victoria. And just, as I said earlier, it was in this interview that Merv suggested that they made 50 Pacific Commanders. Now the guitar also came to me with its original case, albeit well battered and moth eaten. And within the case was some really interesting original paperwork. The original hire purchase agreement and all the receipts for paying off the hire purchase were in the case as well. As you can see from the original hire purchase agreement, the agreed price was £44.16 and shillings. And you can see from all the receipts there, the final payment was actually... So the, the guitar was purchased on the 31st of October in 1950, and the final payment was on the 16th of March 1951. So it didn't take too long to pay it all off. The original owner of the guitar was a guy called Morris Walter Lancaster and we've I've found some interesting information about him. It turns out that he served in the Royal Australian Navy. Uh, he was too young to serve during World War One. He was in the cadets during World War One, but in World War Two he had worked his way up the Navy to the rank of Lieutenant Commander and he was actually um, commanding a ship called the HMAS Maryborough during World War II. He saw action off the northeast coast of Australia during the war, uh, which is really interesting because the guitar is called a Pacific Commander, and he was a commander of the ship on the Pacific during the war. At some point in the guitar's history, it's also been owned by somebody by the name of M.E. Lang, who took the liberty of engraving their name on the tailpiece in a couple of places. So you're not all here to hear me talk about the guitar, what you really want to hear is the guitar itself, so I'll play you a few tunes. The first one I'll play is a slow blues, so you can hear some of the chord work. Uh, it's a blues in B-flat called Blue Monk, composed by Thelonious Monk. Then I'll play something slightly more up-tempo, a tune by Duke Jordan called Jour Du. Uh, again, this, I've chosen this song because it will feature the lower part of the, the lower register melodically, which I think this guitar works really well. Um, the guitar's a bit thin in the top register, to be honest. And then I'll finish with a song, a, a Beatles song called Julia. <laughs> Thank you. 
One thing I forgot to mention, but I'll say it now, when I was talking about the woods the guitar was built of, the, the top is definitely made of some sort of spruce, fairly open grain spruce, uh, but it's actually really thick. Uh, it's a good quarter of an inch thick at the F holes where I can measure it. And interestingly, I, I went inside with a endoscope and a dentist mirror. Um, I would definitely say it's under braced. There's two parallel braces, but the braces are really, really small, really thin, really narrow, really shallow. Um, I'd say the braces are in fact less than a quarter of an inch themselves. Uh, so that's just an interesting note. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video on the Pacific Commander. And uh, yeah, if you get a chance, have a look at all the other videos that I've made on Australian built arch tops. This guitar certainly fills a gap in my collection that I'd had for 20 years. And it's, it's really good that I've finally come across one in really good condition that fills that gap. And it's a significant part of the, uh, the collection of Australian-built archtop guitars. Thanks for listening.